Good morning, Bitcoiners. The sun's up, Bitcoin totally running, internet mm, not so great on this boat. So we're gonna try something new today while we have some coffee and talk about what's also new. So today, we're gonna to be talking about the train again. Not everyone finally talking about it, I'd say when we first mentioned it a few days ago, but you probably heard it here first. We were talking about it, I think on Sunday already. And now finally getting some traction, people talking about it being one of the great environmental disasters of all time. Um, and I want to bring up a, a really interesting take on it, which was, of course, from Cernovich, right? Cernovich always with the interesting takes, always with, I think, the important message to take away from some of these big stories. So what he says is, 50 years ago, if you were a smart Midwestern kid, you could test your way into jobs and infrastructure and train engineering. You could test your way, he says. The Supreme Court banned IQ tests for jobs. So you went to college or fell through the cracks. Anyway, there. this is why uh, this is all happening now. Gonna get worse. The smartest boomers were managing trains and infrastructure. Gen X's talented ones knew who couldn't get those jobs anymore due to the hiring quotas and went to laptop gigs. Huge holes are opening up now. People aren't even close to ready for the final boomer die off. And Jack Possebeek, was also talking about that. He said, years ago, Cernovich and I were on warning, and I were warning about industrial attacks on train systems. They called us conspiracy theorists. And then environmental terrorists started getting caught doing it across the Northern Pacific um, West, and uh, the Pacific Northwest. Uh, and Cernovich asked to that uh, Jack Possibly tweet, what if boomers were actually the good guys all along? So I'm not here to talk about good guys and bad guys and which skills were important, right? There, there's a lot still to criticize about boomers, but we can't deny that they were a generation that absolutely benefited from the consistency of the worldview as presented to them when they were children. Of course, boomers grew up in the 50s and 60s when the credentialist system worked, when you could maybe have a little more confidence in media before uh, everything that happened with Vietnam and the complete degradation of many of our institutions, which we're all living with now, right? We're seeing the decay set in, we're seeing the entropy set in. It's setting in across industries, it's setting into finance, it's setting into communications and media, transportation now. Some people predicting this is gonna trickle down straight through to airplanes and all kinds of other stuff, right? So that could be the case, right? That really could be the case. And we can see this generational shift, especially when we consider exactly what Cernovich said here. The best and brightest for a long time went to Wall Street simply because that's where you made money, right? You made money there. And all this financial engineering, all of this uh, talent, the best and brightest for an entire generation went into this industry. They didn't go to uh, farming, they didn't go into train engineering, they didn't go into aeronautics, they went into this industry. Now some did go into software design and computer engineering, of course there was a whole field of super talented people who went into computer science and engineering and cryptography, and if it wasn't for them, we would be nowhere uh, when it comes to this Bitcoin thing that we're up to, right? We wouldn't have had those shoulders to stand on. So. Uh, th there isn't a, a directed way this stuff happened. It isn't a conspiracy. It's simply that the best and brightest went to where you make the most money. Only a few of those fields were useful to humanity. And it's because of the fiat system. It's because of the lack of feedback, right? There's no feedback loop when money is created by dictate and by imagination. That's the reason why we end up listening to, you know, unhealthy people tell us about health, right? That's why that's happening across the board. Why are we listening to folks like uh, Pete Buttigieg, right, who should be in charge of the entire um, uh, response to the train derailment while he spent hours yesterday in an interview in New York City only mentioning, only mentioning the gender quotas that go into, and the racial quotas that go into the massive hiring that the Department of Transportation does and insists on uh, as far as member companies who are part of this uh, heavily state-funded uh, infrastructure, right? The infrastructure around rails, Amtrak in the United States, all of this lives off of government subsidy, lives off of the fiat system. So when we're talking about generational changes now, right? It's not just about 
uh, people taking over the same jobs, there's no appetite amongst the newer generation to take over these jobs because they simply weren't trained to do it. They had other things to do, particularly go in Wall Street. One of the reasons why Bitcoiners are so insistent that crypto and Bitcoin are different is because of this fact. Bitcoiners do not want the best and brightest to go to Wall Street anymore. That's over. They want the best and brightest to go into trains. <laughs> they want the best and brightest to be engineers again and to build things or even just farmers making healthy food or even just um, uh, skilled tradesmen, tra uh, craftspeople, uh, carpenters, all those kinds of things. Luckily, we're seeing these people finally get paid, right? This big boom, house boom that happened during the last fiat money printing had really good effects in terms of uh, supporting those people who uh, eschewed college, didn't go for credentialism, didn't go for higher education, went to apprenticeship professions like carpentry, learned their profession, and now are able to charge a really nice amount of money, a healthy living wage in order to build this kind of stuff. And, and participate in the housing boom in America. So luckily things are trending in the right direction. But the generational chaos, the generational decay that we've seen uh, can even be seen in media, for example. But the good news is there, the good news is there. You had Joe Rogan yesterday criticizing Brian Stelter, who was in the World Economic Forum. And he was talking about how Brian Stelter more or less is one of the last people willing to take money and lie for folks like the WEF and mm -hmm. to really just abandon all journalistic credibility and simply get out there and start uh, boosting and cheerleading for um, those who want to keep status quo and those want to make sure that there's sort of a Wall Street type edifice built off fiat around us. So remember, what, what the big distinction is between crypto and Bitcoin, the way I see it, is crypto folks are almost in the same trajectory as the fiat folks in that, okay, the best and brightest went into Wall Street. We don't want to change that. We just want to make Wall Street more complicated. We want a Series 7 license uh, to participate in Wall Street as a trader, analyst, investor, to also uh, require now a uh, computer science degree so that you can combine computer science and Wall Street uh, machinations in order to have this whole new career and industry. Bitcoiners, I would say, uh, really want to recreate a feedback loop that takes away the, the huge stampede we saw for a generation to head to Wall Street and f get those people to be back in things like we saw in carpentry in the housing boom, right? To get people back into professions that require apprenticeship, require learning. And one of the main reasons why we're gonna get there as far as navigating this generational change, right? Now, I, I think the prediction that Cernovich makes is accurate. We're gonna have more trouble with trains. We're gonna have more trouble with infrastructure. We are gonna to have to deal with a huge competent class of people leaving, right? The, the, the next generation, look, look, at, look at Joe Biden, right? Joe Biden as president is one of the examples of the kind of entropy that set in to this whole generational outlook that we've had, right? He is himself a boomer, of course, right? Maybe even, is he not a 80 years old? Does that make him? I guess he is a silent generation. He's not even really a boomer, right? That's kind of crazy. Uh, or is he? I, I, I'm missing the math. 70, 80, he's born in 40. Yeah, he's not even a boomer, right? He's not even a boomer. So um, we've seen this entropy set in and Bitcoiners are interested in changing things down to the level of time preference where um, if that happens right you're going to get mastery again you're not going to get these folks who are able to be a train conductor because of their skin color or because of a quota and now that we're changing that now that we're shifting attention and shifting focus you can see it already in why i mentioned brian stelter and media right no one trusts these people. This is the result of uh, a, a system that has totally decayed. Entropy is completely set into media. We see what they did with the Twitter files and Russiagate, and now we see with the Nord Stream story that um, more and more people don't find them credible at all and are turned off completely and are going towards folks who have more of a organic following, natural feedback, so the Joe Rogans, the sticks, hex, and hammers. Uh, this show, for example, right? We're we're here to 
slow things down a little bit, take our time, not push hot button issues, not deliver the cheap dopamine hits of outrage and anger, and to really stay, stop, look, and predict where we're headed, see if we need any modification along the way, and help us get there. So uh, the time preference thing might even change the way we travel in the end. You know, we talk a lot here about the Nakamoto Trail, about the ability to create a network uh, infrastructure, civil engineering, right? A network for small electric vehicles to run around North America and no longer have any dangers of accidents because if you crash a small electric three-wheeler or four-wheeler, you know, the worst that can happen is if you break a leg. I suppose if you fall off a cliff, it's possible to perish in one of these electric vehicles, but there are very few circumstances where you're going to get an, a major injury if you're driving, you know, 25 miles an hour max speed and and you're going around but the important thing is to think of it in terms of a trail that wouldn't require uh, a huge uh, uh, institution run by Pete Buttigieg to maintain like the national rail network right my idea for the uh, Nakamoto trail would be to have volunteerism pay for it right so bitcoiners themselves donate money we take that cash flow and start building other parts of trail and it doesn't have to be any standard engineering quality you could be sometimes on a dirt path you could be on a cobblestone path sometimes you can be on a paved path right these vehicles don't because they use bicycle tires and all kinds of stuff don't really require the same uh uniform engineering uh and complicated engineering structures so there is a world where we don't have to worry about centralized grids anymore because Bitcoin can incentivize the decentralization of the grid, right? Bitcoin financed energy buildouts will create a decentralized energy grid, which will save us from having to rely on any centralized authority for our energy. So you can see it in energy, you can see it in transport, you can see it in media. The decentralization, the end of the pyramid scheme of top-down control, uh, really motivated by uh, the dollar, and, and you can understand this if you follow the money in any of these institutions, follow the money in media, follow the money in um, civil infrastructure and the corruption we see with government oversight. Follow the money in any of these areas and you're going to come to the conclusion that the money itself has corrupted the systems. The lack of feedback loop within these systems has degraded them to the point where we can't have any confidence anymore in our rail networks. We can't have any confidence anymore in our uh, financial infrastructure. We can't have any confidence anymore in our media. And that's why Bitcoin, by changing incentive structures, can actually reformat the grid, can reformat transportation, can reformat Wall Street in a way that will actually allow us to perpetuate into the future. We'll be able to get over this huge human capital loss we're about to have from the boomers going offline and not being able to um, add the expertise that they did so for so many years to our system. So it's the normal transition when you get into these fourth turnings that these kinds of big changes coming. Luckily, Bitcoin orients us, it guides us, it shows us the way, and all we have to do is listen. We'll see the incentives and we're going to build all this stuff without anyone telling us to. Brian Stelter, you're out of a job no matter what. Uh, we got some kind of stuff. We'll help you. Don't worry about it. Uh, but we're coming to fix all of these institutions. All right, guys, tell me how this new format went. Um, like, subscribe. Uh, leave a comment, please, and I'll see you live soon. We're going to try this today and see how it goes. We'll be back doing the live thing in no time. The boat internet, you know how it goes. All right, everyone. Thanks a lot.